this is probably the best mobile gaming controller there is. It's called the GameSir X2. Let's take a look at that. Oof. All right, I hate to say this, but the very first thing you see from the GameSir X2 is the stupid design of this band right here. I think I probably just gonna rip it off, but usually I actually just put it on top of that. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the controller itself. So this is a USB Type-C version of the GameSir X2. It also has the uh, lighting cable version for the iOS. Obviously what this means is this controller doesn't use a battery. It's not a Bluetooth controller, it's a wire controller. And it works on a USB Type-C. Um, most of the smartphones today, um, I say most because, yeah, most. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's take a look at this thing quickly. At the front, it's basically like the Nintendo Switch layout. Let's just take a look here. That is a Nintendo Switch Lite, and this is the GameSert X2. Same layout. Same button layout as the Nintendo. And uh, these buttons feel almost the same too. It's a little bit more clicky, but you know, it's basically the same. So. Yeah, so it has a Nintendo Switch layout. It doesn't have any triggers. Those are buttons. As you can probably hear it, it's just buttons. These two. They're loud. They're, they're uh, nicely loud. So anyway, and then you can expand it to a size. I think you can go up to something like a eight inch device. I need to read the manual about that. Yeah, so uh, it's very straightforward. It's got L3 and R3, you know. Yeah, and there's not really too much to say. And it's got those grip in the back. Um, holds it in place so it doesn't slip around if you sweat. And uh, yeah, it's a logo in the back. The device is uh, pretty thin, easy to carry around. And economics is pretty good. I mean, compared to the switch light again. The back of the switch light is all flat and this you can hold on to those rubber hand grips. So uh, it's a little bit better than the Nintendo Switch. It's not so thin but it does mean there's a little bit of uh, thickness to it. The button you see there's a USB Type-C. That is a pass-through charging so when your phone is connected to the GameSet X2 you can still use this Type-C to charge your phone. So that's a really nice feature. This is my um, old phone. This is the uh, Asus Zenfone 5Z. The Zenfone 5Z uses the uh, Qualcomm A45 CPU. So uh, yeah, it, it's, got some, uh, it's got some power. It's not so bad. 
and then yeah it's a perfect fit for it so that's what I use but just to talk a little bit about it I have Bluetooth game pads for for my uh, mobile device for mostly Android device I have Bluetooth ones and then uh, I have more than one Bluetooth ones and before that point I even have a bunch of other controllers that I modded to use for mobile purposes in the past I even made numbers of videos how I turned the um, the, the Wii Remote into a Bluetooth controller I turned the PS3 controller into a Bluetooth controller for smartphone you know stuff like that but you no know, it, it never really worked I mean I mean take a look at this all right so we have a PS3 controller here and we have a PS4 controller yeah, and that, yeah I bought those uh, attachments for it to make it uh, mobile gaming make your smartphone into a mobile game controller since the PS3 controller as well as the PS4 controller both support Bluetooth you would think this is a good idea but to be honest this is not that portable so it's this this is nice if you want to use the controller for a, a, a smartphone to play games but if you're talking about actually bringing this thing to with you to places I mean just look at it do you really want to shove one of those controller into your bags so you can take your smartphone like this to play with it I mean I don't really want to if I if I'm the bus and I'm playing like this and then you know if it's my stuff to go what am I gonna do take it out put it in my pocket put this in my bag I mean it's not really convenient and then you couldn't put this thing in your pocket so yeah it doesn't work plus a lot of phones nowadays or even a while back they will have their power button right near the middle of it so those kind of design they always have the uh, attachment for the phone right there in the center so yeah a lot of my other phones it, it will just block it so it works as a controller if you just want to play this way but it doesn't really work if you want to bring it to places now with the game sir you don't have to worry about that you can bring this whatever you want you can play on the bus and stuff like this and if you gotta go both of them can easily go to your bag or go to your pocket it takes the battery from your phone as part of your phone so that's what makes it really good and that's what triggers me to buy the Gamser X2 with most of the Bluetooth controllers based on my experience you do need to charge them separately and almost all of them doesn't give you a real indication of when your battery is gonna go out you only tells you when your battery is about to go out and that's not good enough if you go in the morning you brought one of those controller thing you have no idea if it's gonna run out of battery and then you start playing it that's when it flashing the battery light then yeah so then you'll be out of luck you'll try to charge it and stuff like this it's not very convenient so without the battery then you don't got to worry about that and that is kind of a point for this and that's what makes it really good and it, it is a pick out to go situation you plug it in you see the blue light go on basically it's ready to go so I can just play my game right away as soon as you plug it in. But I must say, GameSet X2 is kind of expensive. It's really not cheap for something that doesn't require battery and doesn't have a Bluetooth um, you know, module in it. It doesn't have any wireless module and it doesn't have any batteries in it and it costs way more <laughs> than those Bluetooth ones. As far as the component cost wise, I don't understand why the game Sword X2 costs so much, but it does. Yeah, so we should be uh, talking a little bit about its uh, downsides. If you have a right smartphone, like this Asus Zenfone 5Z, you plug it in, it will just go. But you didn't, if you didn't have a right phone, you will have a lot of problems. I have some experiences with this game Sword X2 on other phones that really are problematic. For example, in other phone, on my, uh, on my ASUS Zenfone 7, 
phone and every time the plug it in, in when you press onto the B button, you wouldn't press, you would just do a lot of taps automatically, like repeats. It's really weird problem. And um, and then for example, there's certain phones, if you plug in the uh, pass through charging and you won't charge your phone, that happens on another phone of mine. And uh, yeah, you just really have to find the right phone. And some phones may be a little too thick for this attachment and then other ones not, like the 5Z. So, so far, all the older my phones that have uh, USB Type-C, the Zenfone 5Z, it's probably the only one that fits properly, correctly. Yeah, but if it does work, it does work really well. So, and GameStar X2 is, I'm pretty sure, is the China brand of a controller of this type. Therefore, they do have their own software. And then to get their software, it's really hard to understand that software. The software itself is like some kind of a game stored in, in itself, I think. And it does have controller set up. Uh, I don't have it here because it was a little too confusing. And you kind of need to deal with that. And some phones, I think, you'll work well once you have that thing installed and some other times not. So it's kind of... Uh, it doesn't always work right. It has a little bit of reliability issue because of the compatibility problems that it might have, uh, depending on what phone you use. One thing that to complain about is the, is the space between the right uh, thumbstick and the B button. That's such a small space right here. If you really want to play the game, you play it intense, you'll always be you know fighting for space to press that button it's fine though you get used to it but that is you know kind of a problem right there let's just uh take a look at some of the games to play some of the games on this let's take a look at psp uh running on pp sspp standalone and uh this is uh what are we running here oh yeah this is the uh i'll run sp2 i'll run sp2 is that what it's called I'll run 2006, coast to coast. All right, let's do this. Some volume. Were they not being Bluetooth? There's no latency problem. You're, it's very, very responsive. Okay, so here's Tekken for the PSP. It's probably really hard to see the, uh, the low latency on this since I'm battle matching on those Tekken games. No Alright, this is GT Cube on the Nintendo GameCube.
Okay, so this is the Thumb Pantry on Ritual Art. You can see the responsiveness from the shooter mounts for sure. It does require a lot of quick actions in order to dodge those bullets. So overall, Gensu X2 USB Type-C, it's really good in terms of performance. Performance-wise, there's no latency, don't need to worry about Bluetooth, battery, none of that stuff. You just plug, go, put this in your bag, even fit in your pocket if you wanted to. Easy to carry in comparison to other solutions. Very, very good, but there is a compatibility problem. I know I didn't have any video to show for it, but it's something that I need to let you know. It didn't work so well on some of the other devices I have. Um, it's, it may or may not require a software in order for it to work. Um, there's not much information because the software is in Chinese. Uh, it's from China. So uh, there are that aspect of things that you should consider. Um, if you want to give it a shot, I say go for it. So what I recommend it, it really is really hard to recommend for the performance and what it can do I totally recommend it but for what it is and how much it costs and with that compatibility problem it's really hard for me to actually just say go out there and get this if you can it's 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 really hard I mean I, I'm glad I got this and I experiment experiment with it and then I, I'm glad that I found uh, a way to use it that I'm happy with but then I'm not exactly it wasn't exactly what I had in mind because I wanted to use it on my current phones. And then on my current phones, it, it works kind of odd. Like it requires software, it doesn't always work and it has that button issues and you know, a firmware update doesn't fix it, stuff like this. I don't know if there will be updates. Hopefully there will be updates. Uh, that will make a world of difference if this compatibility wise will work with a lot more hardware. It's just, there's no real way to know unless, until you try it. So, uh, yeah, uh, here's, that's why it's really hard to make it into a review video for me. I mean, on the surface, first time try, if you got lucky, you work well, it work well. But me, it didn't work well on my first well try. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to turn it into a review. It's more of my impression of the device and uh, now share my experience with you. So yeah, that 
is all for this video. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.